This is the Samsung Galaxy S24 FE disassembly. If you're interested in seeing more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and click on notification bell so you'll be notified once I upload a new video. Also, if you need any tools, there are links in the description. First, the SIM tray needs to be removed. Looking at the SIM tray, we can see a gray rubber gasket around the opening. Now heat needs to be applied to the back plate to loosen up the adhesive underneath, and then a pry tool can be used to pry the back plate off. I prefer to use a hair dryer since there's less of a chance of damaging any of the components inside by overheating them. Here's a look at the glass back plate. The camera lens covers can be replaced by applying heat and gently prying them off. So you don't need to take apart the phone to replace those. Now there are 21 Phillips screws that have to be removed. Here's the wireless charging coil and an FC antenna. Here's a look at the other side. There's also graphite film to help transfer heat. The battery cable cannot be disconnected, followed by the rest of the cables. The top earpiece speaker is located in the center of this plastic cover. Here's the speaker itself. And this is the 5G millimeter wave antenna. This is the 10 megapixel front facing camera and it's not glued in place with a cure in place gasket like we've seen before. There's a single Phillips screw which is holding down the main board. Looking at the main board, we see the 12 megapixel ultra wide lens, the 50 megapixel primary camera, as well as the 8 megapixel telephoto camera. The main and telephoto cameras are the only ones with OIS or optical image stabilization. There's a secondary microphone on the top corner, and the LED flash is located here. The SIM reader is located on the other side, as well as the ambient light sensor, and the connectors for the cameras which can be disconnected by just popping them off. There's also a graphite pad on the back shield to help transfer heat. Once the graphite pad has been peeled back, we see thermal paste on top of the RAM which is seated over the processor. Here's a better look with the thermal paste removed. This is the bottom speaker assembly. This flex cable connects the main board to the subboard as well as the screen. And this flex cable also connects the main board to the subboard.
If you needed to replace the screen, you'd have to remove the back cover or back plate, the screws on the bottom speaker assembly and the speaker assembly itself. You then disconnect the flex cables from the subboard, pry off or peel off the screen cable from the frame, at which point you would heat up the front of the phone where the screen is to loosen up the adhesive underneath, and pry the old screen off, apply a new adhesive, reapply the new screen making sure you run the flex cable back to the opening in the midframe, and reassemble the phone. There are two Phillips screws which are holding down the subboard. Looking at the subboard, we can see a red rubber gasket around the charger port, and the primary microphone is located here. Here's a look at the other side. The vibrator motor is located here, which is held down with some adhesive, and the same goes for the fingerprint scanner, which is located here. So if you need to replace those, just apply some heat and pry them off. To remove the battery, there's a pull pouch provided to help you pry it off. This is the 4,700 milliamp hour battery. Here's a look at the vapor chamber, which looks to be slightly bigger than the S23 FE. The flex cable for the volume keys and power button is located here. If you need to replace that, just carefully peel off the flex cable from the frame and lift up this metal bracket inside the frame and pull it out. If you need to replace the volume keys and the power button, those can be pulled out of the frame. For anyone worried about accidentally inserting a SIM ejector tool in the wrong hole, on this phone you don't need to worry since both filters on the bottom and top as well as the microphones are seated above the holes so they won't get damaged. Here are some side-by-side -side comparisons of the Galaxy S23 FE and the Galaxy S24 FE. For the repairability score on this phone, I give it an 8.5 out of 10. Now it's time to put the phone back together. Once everything's back in place, apply new adhesive and reapply the back plate. Flip over the phone, power it on, and you're done. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one.